In today's review, I'm going to be unboxing and testing the Audio Technica AT2005 USB microphone. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Audio Technica 2005 USB microphone and I'm really hoping it's in this box because otherwise it's going to be a really really short video. Now not only am I going to be unboxing and reviewing it but I'm going to be recording a song with it including vocals and guitar on a free DAW using only stock plugins and no audio interface. That's a big ask for a microphone that normally retails for 79 US dollars. So let's not muck around anymore. Let's get stuck into this box and see what's in there. Now, if this is the kind of content that you usually like to watch on YouTube, then please do subscribe to this channel. Ring the bell on YouTube so you can see my future videos. Now, with the box nearly open, there we go, Mike, let's see. We've got some brown paper packing. Some more brown paper packing and uh, we have what have we got here we've got an audio technica not the microphone i was talking about this is an at 2020 wh microphone something i will be reviewing in a future video but they haven't made a mistake and sent me the wrong microphone no they're much more clever than that because in the box is the at2005 usb microphone nice box let's see what's inside so let's open the packing here we have a user manual and we also have a nice case for your microphone. We'll pop that there. Um, we have a XLR cable, which we won't be using for this video. Um, there is a stand in here. Let's have a look at that. Okay, you've got a desktop stand. I don't often use microphones on a desktop, but it could come in handy for you. We also have a clip um, which will fit on a regular mic stand. Um, just have a look at that, it feels okay. The only thing I'll say is it's got a plastic thread in the bottom of it, so you'd wanna be careful with that um, when you use it not to cross thread it. Um, we also have what we will be using, a USB microphone. We'll be using that to connect the microphone directly to my computer. And in the box, we also have the microphone itself. So you're getting a lot for the 79 US dollars here, folks. I've got to say the microphone has a really nice feel to it. It's pretty heavy. Um, it's got a metal construction to it. Um, just looks really, really nice. Um, a pretty decent switch on there. And the really important part, which is down at the bottom, this microphone has a regular XLR connection to connect it to an audio interface or a live mixer. It also has a USB connection and it has a headphone jack so that you can monitor what you're recording and it also has a volume control. Now I have done a bit of reading on this and the important part of this is not only can you monitor what you're saying or singing through the microphone as you do it but it'll also play back what's on your computer at the same time. That's what's gonna make this possible for our little experiment today. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the studio and get on with this task. Okay, so here we are in the studio and there's a couple of things I'd like to mention about this microphone before we start recording with it. First of all, this is a dynamic microphone. Now I would normally suggest a condenser microphone as the main microphone in your studio, but there are a couple of advantages with dynamic microphones. First of all, it doesn't need a phantom power supply, so it doesn't need any kind of external power supply. And second of all, with dynamic microphones, they're really, really good at keeping out background noise. And that's because they're most sensitive around this part of the microphone and they don't pick up much beyond that. So that's really handy because if you've got like a noisy computer in your room or you've got some noise outside of your window like traffic, this will actually do a pretty good job of keeping that noise at a minimum. 
Now, the next thing I want to mention is the DAW that you can see on the screen behind me. I'm going to be using Cakewalk by BandLab, and that is a completely free DAW. And I'm only going to be using the stock plugins and instruments which come with Cakewalk. So this is no extra cost. You can download it today and you can get using it. Now I'm going to start off by recording an acoustic guitar and I'll be using a method which I picked up from Warren Hewitt where you place a dynamic microphone pretty close to this area of the guitar and more often than not you can get a decent sound that way. It may or may not work with your instrument so you should always experiment. If it doesn't work well there for you then try up around the 12th fret or so. Whatever you do don't point it towards the sound hole. So with that said, I'm going to get on and record this guitar. Okay, so let's listen to the same guitar again using a little bit of processing using only stock plugins. Okay, so now I've recorded the guitar, it's time to record some vocals. But before we get into that, you've probably noticed something a little bit different about the mic now. I've popped on this foam windscreen, and that's to cut down on the plosives. Uh, the plosives are like the P's and the B sounds that you get when you sing into a microphone. They can be quite overwhelming and quite unwanted. So a foam windscreen really helps with that. It doesn't come with this microphone, but I got it from a local music store for like two or three dollars, so there's no problem there highly recommend getting one of those now we're going to actually record a male and a female vocal so you can hear this microphone with some quite different characteristics so let's have a look I want to see how it sounds I want to see Could sing here forever. We might sing here forever to see how it sounds. La -da 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 -da. La -da 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 So I should mention that while we were recording the vocals, we were able to hear ourselves and the backing music at the same time through the headphones that we plug in at the bottom of the microphone. Now that's direct monitoring. There's no latency, there's no delay at all. You're actually hearing what you're singing as you sing it and as I say, with the accompaniment coming through the same headphones. A really handy feature. Now, let's hear the same vocal tracks, but with a little bit of processing in the form of EQ and some dynamics and a little bit of a reverb using just the stock plugins which come with Cakewalk. I wanna see how it sounds I want to see how it sounds We could sing here forever We might sing here forever To see how it sounds La da dee da 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 La da dee da Okay, so now that we've got our guitar and our vocal recorded using our microphone, let's add in some virtual instruments. I'm gonna be adding a bass guitar and some drums, and these are both free virtual instruments which come with Cakewalk, so they won't be costing you any extra. So let's have a listen to our track with those on it. Sing here forever. 
we might sing here forever to see how it sounds. La da di da 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 da. La da di da 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 da. So has this microphone been successful in the task that I said it? Of course it has. Uh, should you now go and sell your audio interface and all your studio gear and just buy this microphone? Of course you shouldn't. And there are one or two reasons why. As good as this is and as well as it's done, there are some downsides to this microphone. First of all, it only records at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz at 16 bit. So it isn't the highest quality of microphone in that sense where you won't get the highest quality of recordings. Also I did notice as I was using the microphone that there was a very faint background hum or kind of hiss to it. I thought that was just because I was using USB so I switched over to XLR, plugged it into my audio interface but it was still there. I'm not at all surprised at $79 folks, you shouldn't expect too much. It wasn't the biggest hiss in the world, you'd have to have it cranked up really really loud in a pair of headphones and be listening to a quiet section of the piece to really notice it but it was there. Other than that, there are of course lots of bells and whistles that audio interfaces have on them now which make it easier to record. But if you're just starting out and you're not sure if you're gonna get into this or not or you're, or you're on really limited funds, then this could be a really, really good choice for you. So if you see people in forums asking about microphones for under $100 for people just starting out, then bookmark this video and send them my way. I've got more reviews coming up in the near future so if this is the kind of thing you like to watch then please do like subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so you'll get notified of my future videos with all that said I will see you next week first of all this is a, is a dynamic microphone and I would normally suggest blah 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 okay so here we are in the studio and I just, blah. First of all, it doesn't need a power supply. It doesn't need a phantom power supply. So that's a really cool thing. It's just gonna operate when you, for God's sake.